What's going on everyone? This is Jay Patel and in this video we will be understanding what is mini batch gradient descent. We will see what are its advantage over the normal gradient descent algorithm. When do we use mini batch gradient descent and when do we not use mini batch gradient descent. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel then this is your chance to subscribe. Hit the red subscribe button also hit the bell icon so that you get notified every Sunday when I upload a new machine learning video in which I give a mathematical details behind every single model and the intuition behind those as well. So hit the red subscribe button and without further ado let's get started with this video. If you are watching this video then you already know about the gradient descent algorithm and you would know that in gradient descent algorithm we update weights in such a way that we attain the minimum cost function value. So in every updation we reach closer to the local minimum and overall this is how our model will look like where this is the step where we will be updating our weight parameters. Now the problem with this is that we are passing the entire data set at once. Now what if the data set size is too large for example let's say our data set size is 100,000 or 1 million. In this case what will happen is that to update weights our model will have to process this huge amount of data and it will take a long long time to process this data. So the entire training will be very very slow where each step will take a long long time to process. And it is also possible that we might be having a lot of features in every single data point. For example we might be dealing with 100,000 images all of size 1000 cross 1000 pixels. So now in this case we will be dealing with almost over 10 power 11 bytes of data which will be equal to 100 GB of data and our RAM or GPU is very limited and thus uh, the RAM size can be let's say maximum of 64 GB. It won't be able to handle or process this much amount of data at once. So we will be getting this out of memory error and our training will be impossible. So to overcome this we use mini batch gradient descent and the way it works is that we divide the entire data set of let's say m size which is uh, let's say 100,000 into many mini batches like uh, this can be a one mini batch with 1000 data points and this can be another mini batch with 1000 data points and so on. So we will be having in total of 100 mini batches. So instead of passing the entire data set what we will be doing is that we will be passing the mini batches train the model update the weight and then we will pass another mini batch. For example we will first pass this mini batch train the model update the weights and then we will pass this mini batch train the model updates the weight and so on till we complete the entire 100 mini batches. So by the time our model has seen the entire data set we would have already made a lot of progress by updating our weights 100 times. And as we are passing the mini batches it will reduce the time taken to train the model as well as we won't be having that out of memory error. Now the only problem that we have with the mini batch gradient descent is that as we are passing only a small batch of data and then training the model what will happen is that our model at that time will not be able to recognize the patterns that are present in the other mini batches but it will be only be able to train for that specific mini batch or itself. So if we take a look at the cost versus parameter graph we will be actually getting a zigzag curve. Let me show you what I mean. Now we know that the graph of cost versus W parameter looks something like this where every step will take us towards the local minima. And this is a graph for only when plotted against only one of the weight parameter. Let's say if we plot the same graph for two of the weight parameters then it will become a three dimensional plot where, we'll, where we will be getting this surface like this. And uh, if we started from this point then we will converge to the local minima by taking these baby steps. But when we will implement our model with the mini batch gradient descent what will happen is that our model has only seen that mini batch size of data and it does not know the other data. The updation won't take place exactly like this where it will converge directly to the minima but it will go something like this then this then this then this then this then this. So it will take a zigzag curve till it 
reaches to the local minima it will never reach exactly to the local minima but it will like uh, oscillate around that region and this zigzag path is actually called noise now imagine if our data set size is not 100000 but only 1000 so at that time it is actually pointless to use the mini batch gradient descent because our lot of the time will be utilized or consumed by following this zigzag path instead of just following that straight path but if we have one but if we have a huge data set then we would have already made a lot of progress in this example we would have updated our weights 100 times and by the time our model has seen the entire data set we would have already made a lot of progress toward the local minimum and apart from this there is another algorithm called stochastic gradient descent now in this algorithm our mini batch size is actually one so every single data point is like our mini batch and we pass one data point train the model update the weight then uh, again pass the another data point and train the model update the weights and so on till the entire data set is passed in the case of the stochastic gradient descent the updation will look something like this where it won't be following a normal path but it will be eventually leading to the local minima and thus in stochastic gradient descent we will be having a lot of noise so that's why practically we never use stochastic gradient descent so in practice for a small data set size for example where m is less than 2000 or 5000 then we use normal gradient descent and this normal gradient descent is actually called as a batch gradient descent so in the batch gradient descent actually our batch size is nothing but our entire m and when the data set size is huge at that time we use mini batch gradient descent and in mini batch gradient descent uh, once we pass the entire data set uh, it is called as a one epoch where one epoch means we have already passed the entire data set and we will be training the model for many such number of epochs now there are also other algorithms which can help us to reduce this zigzagness in our path those algorithm will smoothen out the path uh, where this zigzagness will be reduced and we will be approaching to the minimum much faster and some of such algorithms are gradient descent with momentum rms prop adam etc and in the next video that's what we will be looking at we will study those algorithms and how it can help us along with the mini batch gradient descent to train our model much faster so that's it for this video if you found this video helpful then hit the like button and i will see you in the next one